Good afternoon folks. I have decided to do something a little bit different today because I've been on a lot of adventures on this channel but I don't go on many local adventures so I've decided to take you on my most favourite coastal walk of all going from Dalgetty Bay to Aberdawa and they are two little towns in West Fife in Scotland so I'm just coming along here, I've just got on the path now and behind me here is the beach. Now you're going to look at this beach and maybe wonder why is nobody on it? Firstly because it's disgusting and secondly it's potentially radioactive so we don't really go there anymore. Over here in the distance that's Arthur's Seat in Edinburgh and that's the castle on the other side there. Right over there that's the castle. That's the middle of Edinburgh and on really nice clear days you can see it quite clearly from here because Fife is the only other side of the water. This is a lovely coastal path. I remember coming along here as a kid and this was my favourite because it just felt so adventurous. And we'd go and walk over to Aberdow, which was the next town. It would maybe take us about an hour and then we'd go and buy ice cream. So today it's a lovely Sunday day nice and sunny, it's a Sunday, Sunday day, and I've decided I'm going to do the same, so come join me. We're heading kind of towards the woods now, and the next thing we're going to see is the reason why this was my favourite walk and why I felt it was so, so adventurous. This is St Bridget's Kirk, which is an ancient, ancient church just on the end of Dalgetty Bay here. I'm just gonna go in. And the thing I love about this is you can still go in and have a wander around, even though there's not very much left here now. Just look at this, this is such a relic. This was once a church. And look, we've got stone steps. And up here, we have the most magnificent view of the sea. It's so, so peaceful to come here. And as a kid, I loved coming here because it helped me to use my imagination and try and figure out what went on here. I didn't really quite appreciate that it was an old church. I just didn't know what it was. So coming very carefully down these steps again, because like I say, they are very, very old. Let's go and have a look around. This is a very, very old graveyard I'm in right now. Some of these headstones are from like 1768, which is just insane. But I have to say, I wouldn't mind having my grave here, right next to this beautiful view of the water. So I think it's time for me to get over to Aberdawa. So I've just walked up this very steep hill, right along the side of the very edge of Dalgetty Bay. And now we're going to turn and go along here. Now between Dalgetty Bay and Aberdawa, there's a lot of fields. So we're basically going to be walking in between the fields. And this is the most remote part of this walk. I honestly feel like I'm in the middle of nowhere when I'm doing this bit. Apart from the old abandoned church, this is probably the bit that I considered the most adventurous on this walk. Because it honestly feels like I'm in the middle of nowhere. Like it's just fields this side, it's just fields and water this side. So as a kid, I was like, oh my God, we are lost. And I knew we weren't really lost because we're just in the middle of two towns here, but it is quite a cool bit to be at. As an adult, I'm a bit more aware that I am in the middle of nowhere by myself, but, I don't expect anything to happen. Fingers crossed everything should be okay and we'll soon be in Aberdawa. This bench probably once had a wonderful view but now all I can see is a hedge. Above the hedge is a wonderful view of Edinburgh and the other things across the water. But for people on the bench, all you can really see is the hedge. I found a field with some wonderful views of Dalgetty Bay and also the bridges that we used to get over to Edinburgh. So let me show you them. This over here 
is Dalgetty Bay, that's where we started out our walk. And then coming along we have three bridges going across the River Forth here. So this first one, if I zoom right in, that's the Forth Rail Bridge, that takes us over by train. The one behind it is the Forth Road Bridge, that's very very old and they're trying to replace it now. And then the one behind that, with these weird spooky things, that's a brand new bridge. It's called the Queen's Ferry Crossing, it opened for the first time the other day. And today it is closed so that loads of local people can walk over it. Which is very very cool and the sun is shining. I wasn't sure if this was going to be a nice day or not but I'm so so glad that I came out today now because it's turned out really lovely. This morning it looked quite cloudy and I wasn't sure whether it was going to start raining or whether it was going to start sun shining. So I'm glad that the sun is shining because standing in the middle of two fields in the middle of nowhere is not the place you want to be when a full-on thunderstorm happens. So anyways we're just coming along here and it's maybe a mile to go or so now to Aberdour but I find that with the scenery around you don't even really find yourself counting how long it's going to be. So once I get to Aberdour I'm going to visit this cafe called McTaggart's and that's where we go now once I finish this walk just for like a hot chocolate and a cake or something or maybe a panini it depends how hungry I am. The thing I love about Aberdour is it's very very community minded there's not very many big brands you'll find in Aberdour and all the businesses seem to be connected to the community the people that we recognize as having been in Aberdour for years so McTaggart's is definitely one of those locally growing they support community events they are part of the community so I'm definitely going to be stopping there getting close to the end now because just the other side of this hedge is the golf course and the golf course is where eventually we're going to come out in Aberdour. Now when I was little my mum tells a story of me skipping the whole way from Dalgetty Bay to Aberdour which would have taken quite some energy but I can feel little Kate's enthusiasm. It's so fun to kind of come along this walk and just know that eventually you're going to get, in little Kate's case, ice cream, in my case, like a hot chocolate and a cake maybe. But it's absolutely lovely, this walk. I still 100% recommend it to anybody. And if I managed it as a little kid, like five, six years old, then you can totally manage it as an adult. Okay, maybe five, six years old is maybe a bit optimistic. Maybe like eight, nine years old. I can't remember how old I was, but I do know that I absolutely loved this walk. And as the trees start to thin out and the houses start to appear, that's when we know we're in about five minutes walk of being in Aberdour Town. Um, Aberdour Town Centre is Aberdour Town. It's either a town or a village, but it would be quite a big village. Yes, we've got the golf course over here, we've got houses over here, and straight on ahead eventually is going to bring me into the kind of main part of Aberdour. So I'm looking forward to this. There's the path that I was just taking, and if we spin around, this is Aberdour we're just coming up to here. I absolutely love the panelling on these gates. It's so, so pretty. And then here is the Woodside Hotel and kind of the main part of Aberdour here. This is where everybody goes through. So Aberdour as a place is quite proud of um, all this kind of gardening work. You'll always find lots of lovely flowers and things in Aberdour. And it's one of them things where you don't even miss in your own places 
but then when you see it in elsewhere you're just like oh my god it's so so pretty the cafe is very very busy right now and I don't want to like freak anybody out by just like vlogging everywhere but um, I just want to say everything about this cafe I absolutely love just the atmosphere the decor even the food is really, really good. It's like it's all local butchers, local bakeries and things. It just feels very homemade, which is really, really awesome. So I've ordered a smoked salmon and scrambled egg bagel because I didn't have much breakfast this morning. And I think it's going to be good. And I've had the hot chocolate before. I've got one of them on the go as well. And I know from experience that it's the best hot chocolate I have ever had. So I'm really looking forward to that. Well, that was absolutely lovely. And now since I'm in Abadawa, I'm going to have another little explore. We're going to go into Abadawa Castle and the gardens there. And then we're going to go over to Silver Sands, which is one of the best beaches in Fife. So since we're here, we might as well go and see it. So it seems Abadawa Castle and Gardens is meant to be paid for to go in. So we're just going to peep our head in very quickly and then get right back out again. There's the castle, there's the gardens, and we're not gonna go in there because we've already seen the ruins of a church today. Very similar thing. So we're gonna continue on to Silver Sands now. Silver Sands is the name of the beach around here. And there seems to be a path down here that I've never been along before. So we're gonna go this way. Okay, the path is actually very, very shady. I don't want to go along there. So we'll just go the way that I know, okay? Okay, so we're back on track now and we're taking the way that I know as to how to get to Silver Sands. Now this is over a kind of football pitch or um, there's actually a game of shinty going on over there. What is shinty, you ask me? It is a Scottish sport and it's a bit like hockey, a bit like lacrosse. Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's the, the kind of running around with sticks and balls and things. Um, I didn't actually know what it was until I was in high school. I'd never heard of it before. So yeah, there's, there's a shinty game going on over there. So if you didn't feel like this was a Scottish vlog, then I'm sure you do now. I'm not going to film the players because that's awfully creepy. But yeah, we're just on a kind of football field now. Or maybe it's just a field because it isn't particularly flat and we're just walking in the direction of the beach. This beach is actually a lot smaller than I remember it being as a kid. I remember it being just like the most massive place ever but when they say silver sands they really mean silver sands. The beach is absolutely lovely here. On a sunny day it's the place to be. Honestly, it really is. I suppose maybe it looks smaller today because the tide's in. Yeah, um, yeah, clever Kate. Clever Kate. You know, there's obviously going to be more sand when the tide is out. This is the source of sand that you can just sink your feet right into. It's really amazing. I absolutely love it. And then the sand just gets even more silvery as we come down to the beach here. Look at this. This is practically white. There's nothing better than a beach with proper sand instead of like gravelly things. This is honestly the nicest sand, I swear. It's like so fine and it's so fun to kind of sink your hands and feet into. It just seems to go on forever. So I really, really enjoyed that walk. So much so that I think I'm now going to walk the same way home. And I really, really enjoyed that great exercise. It didn't even feel like exercise because I was enjoying myself so much. So thank you so, so much for coming along with me. If you have any comments, put them down below. I'd love to read them. And thank you so, so much for watching, everybody. Cheerio.